Okay, just hooked up. Walking up on this vehicle, I almost know what it is, but I could be shooting myself in the foot by talking like that. Uh, it's an old Ford Ranger, and walking here's the problem, or it's an inner mirror problem. One, we know it's old. It hasn't been done in about a decade since he's charged it, so we know we're low. We always lose refrigerant. That's one thing I can guarantee on all my jobs. After I finish recharging your air conditioning system, I guarantee it will leak. That is my guarantee. And look at this gap. You see this gap right here? Clutch, pulley, you see that gap? 16 to 20 thousandths. It could be more, it could be less. Different years had different gaps. But we almost have a 30 thousandth uh, spark plug gap there. It could come on when it's cold. Now this is what the other YouTuber guys don't tell you. They tell you they hit it with a stick, but they don't tell you why really. But you have copper wire, you have a magnetic coil, and you have iron, steel. As it gets hot, it loses its magnetic inductance. As that field coil of copper winding in that electromagnet that's in there, as the copper gets hot, it gets higher resistance, it loses power. As iron gets hot, it becomes less magnetic and a magnetic attraction becomes weak. So you have two things going against you. And these are those cases where, oh, it worked for a while and then it stopped working. And so it'll work 10, 15 minutes as that coil gets hot down there. The next time it disengages and the cycling clutch switch that is up there on the accumulator closes, when the pressure hits roughly 42, 44 PSI, it closes, makes contacts, it sends a signal to your relay, your relay close, contacts close, sends power down to your clutch. It energizes the electromagnet that is now hot and the iron is now hot. It's no longer strong enough to pull in that gap. And that's what you see. Some of you guys, you see the YouTuber guys, they're hitting on the center and they're hitting the compressor. Yeah, they disturb it, yes sir. But they don't actually always hit on the right place. You see them playing around because they've seen somebody else do it. It's the gap you want to hit, not necessarily hit the center. But you didn't hear that from me because that's very dangerous. You have a rotating object here. You have blades right there. Somebody can get hurt. So don't repeat what you see. Just learn by a little knowledge. Let's see if I could do it. I don't even know if there's pressure in the system because I have not closed the valves. I'm just coming up and assuming, and if you remember what the teacher said, if you assume, you make an ass out of me and you, and let's see if I've made an ass out of myself. So I'll close off the vacuum, we got down to 120 in the lines, there we go, and we got 71 PSI, and I know the temperature out here is uh, roughly 77 degrees, they told me this car has been sitting here since this morning for me. So whether I have one drop of liquid refrigerant inside this system or I have 100 pounds of liquid refrigerant inside this system, if it's roughly 70 degrees, you'll get roughly 70 PSI. R12 was more one to one at 70 degrees. You had roughly 70 PSI. R134 is just a little bit more. And you're seeing this at the same time I'm seeing it. Let's see what happens. Did I bite myself in the ass? Was I just talking? I heard the click. I heard a thump. I hear another click. I hear the sound of short cycling. The sound of very low refrigerant. That's the sound of very low refrigerant. I'll recover it let you know what I got and uh, maybe I'll be nice and take a shim out close this gap off because after you recharge it the customer drives away and he's calling you up the next weekend saying his uh, AC is not working he think you did a half ass or a messed up job but it's just you didn't uh, remove that shim and close up that gap